Good morning, my friends. I am Roger Heron, and yes, I am the investor's accountant, like the sign says. Welcome to My Two Cents. My Two Cents today is on storage units. I've got clients all the time wanting to know, is this a business, meaning ordinary income, or is this a rental property? Well, good news and bad news, guys. The tax court made a ruling. And 98% of the time, if you operate a storage facility, it is passive income. It is a great big rental property that has the potential to cash flow like it's on steroids. What's the exception to the rule? If you decide to wholesale or flip storage facilities, that's ordinary income. But for the most part, this is going to be passive income. Well, Roger, I want it to be ordinary income because I'm going to create a loss and use that loss to offset my other income. Guys, the tax court ruled that you cannot do that. There is actually a case, Hopper v. Commissioner, where an attorney was doing exactly that. He was creating a loss inside of the self-storage units he owned and applying it against his income from the law practice. The tax court ruled that's a great big no-no. This is passive income. So what we have to do is follow all the rules of passive income and passive income deductibility, which means just like every other landlord that owns income producing property, you can either be a passive investor, an active investor, or a real estate pro. Passive means whatever income you have, you can use passive loss to offset passive income, but no more loss than income is allowed. Number two, you can be an active participant, which means that up to $25,000 of passive losses are allowed as long as your income is under $100,000. Once you hit 100 grand, you go into phase out, and at $150,000, you have no deduction. Everything is carried forward until you have passive income. What's gonna trigger the passive income? Well, you sell a property. That'd create passive income, or one of your facilities starts throwing off profit. You can go back, grab the losses you haven't been able to take in the past and bring them back. Or you can be a real estate pro, which means more than half of your for-profit time is spent as an owner in real estate. And that could be flipping, wholesaling, rentals, storage facilities, property management, broker, agent. All those things are gonna count, okay? Part two, you have to have a minimum of 750 hours spent as an owner of real estate. That's pretty easy spread across all those activities. But here's the third part that a lot of people miss. 500 of those 750 hours have to be spent in rental real estate that you own. And that can be single family, multifamily, commercial, and storage facility is what? It's commercial. So if you're a real estate pro, you got great deductibility. You have no income cap and you have unlimited deductibility. Hey, check out my earlier videos about the goose that laid the golden egg being a real estate pro. But the answer is you're a landlord of a great big rental property if you own a storage facility. So till the next time, before I say Roger out, I want to invite everybody to subscribe to our YouTube channel. In order to name this sucker, we have to have a thousand subscribers. So please go right down below, click that little subscribe button, and then you'll be able to catch all of our videos without missing anything. So till then, Roger out.